At the beginning of the movie, a guy named Jeffrey takes his own life in his home office. Right after that, another guy named Daniel Snyder walks in and finds Jeffrey hanging there, but he doesn't seem to care. Instead, he picks up a weird snake-shaped thing from the floor and leaves. The movie takes a brief pause to explain what the word harbinger means. It tells us that it's kind of like a warning or a signal that something important or something scary is about to happen. The scene changes and we see a funeral taking place. Daniel, along with his wife Teresa and their daughter Rosalie, are attending the funeral of a man named Jeffrey. His widow, Claire, is sad but thankful that they came and mentions she believes Jeffrey's watching over her from heaven. But Rosalie, in a super spooky voice, tells her that Jeffrey's actually burning in hell. After the funeral, we see Daniel and Teresa at Rosalie's school because she's been acting really strange lately. The movie shows us a flashback of Rosalie before all of this, and she was a happy and normal kid. While they were talking to the school counselor, we learned that the family would be moved to a small, quiet town called St. Haroldson because of Daniel's new job. They travel to the town and meet a lady named Betty who is really involved in the town. Things get weird in the new town. Daniel keeps seeing a mysterious man watching them from a distance, but he always vanishes. A neighbor named Harlan invites them over for dinner with a few other people. They're chatting about cats when Rosalie suddenly says something creepy about cats serving him. Teresa makes her leave the table. The parents try to brush it off by saying she's just getting used to the new place. Daniel mentions maybe taking Rosalie to a nearby Native American area, but everyone at the table freaks out and tells them to stay away. Because it is cursed. Just then, there's a scream from outside and they find a kid on the ground and Rosalie up in a treehouse. Her mom tells her off, but Rosalie coldly says the kid is fine. A bit later, the mysterious man Daniel saw earlier talks to Rosalie and gives her a wooden piece before leaving. That night, Rosalie slips into her dad's pocket. Daniel and Teresa go against the neighbor's advice and take Rosalie to the Native American area anyway. On the way, Rosalie starts freaking out but stops when they tell her to. They meet a seer named Floating Hawk. She says there's no hope for Rosalie and asks her to leave. The seer tells Daniel that he needs to reclaim Rosalie and that only death can save her. Daniel heads over to his neighbor, Harlan's place, to talk about some insurance paperwork. He stashes his briefcase under the house to keep it dry from the rain. When nobody answers the door, he checks the backyard and finds a shocking sight. Harlan's mom has taken her own life by hanging from a tree. To his surprise, he spots the same snake-shaped relic he found at Jeffrey's suicide scene. Later, Daniel and Harlan talk to the police about what happened. That night, Daniel can't sleep and has flashbacks of a time when a shady bald man offered him a deal to escape jail for his past fraud crimes. Needing a break, he steps outside and bumps into his other neighbor, John, who invites him for a beer. As John's grabbing the drinks, Daniel spots the same snake relic on John's shelf. John explains that it's believed to be a tool of the Harbinger who drops it to make people take their own lives so the devil can snatch their souls. The next day, a cop talks to Daniel to clear up some stuff about his report on Harlan's mom's death. The cops are suspicious because the tree she was hanging from was too high for an old lady to climb. He shows Daniel a picture of the snake relic they found at the scene. The cop also tells Daniel he couldn't find their hometown on any map. Daniel explains that they're from a tiny place near Des Moines. That's not officially a town. As the cop leaves, Daniel realizes his briefcase is missing, but then sees the mysterious man from before holding it. He chases the guy who vanishes into some trees and finds his briefcase in a creepy graveyard. Later, Teresa's neighbor rushes over saying she's lost her kid and Rosalie. They find the kid safe and sound in a tunnel, but Rosalie freaks Teresa out by saying the Harbinger is here. Afterward, Daniel goes to Floating Hawk, telling her the devil has his daughter's soul and is making him do awful things to save her. Floating Hawk tells him about a legend of a holy dagger that can kill the evil inside Rosalie, but admits she can't confirm if the legend is true. Daniel's horrified, saying that if he stabs his daughter, she'll die, but Floating Hawk tells him his daughter is already gone. Daniel digs into the history of the dagger and figures out it's hidden under a rock by the local church, but when he gets there, the dagger is gone. 
Meanwhile, Teresa goes to the church to ask the priest to bless Rosalie's necklace, but the priest freaks out when he sees it and tells them to leave. In the car, Rosalie sees the devil in the rearview mirror, but she doesn't seem bothered. Daniel's thinking about planting the snake relic in the house of an old guy named Mare, but can't go through with it when he sees Mare's granddaughter giving him a hug. Later, Teresa asks Daniel if he planted the relic, but Daniel tells her he couldn't do it and will figure out something else. Teresa gets mad and blames him for their situation. Suddenly, Rosalie walks in holding the missing dagger. Daniel rushes to show it to Floating Hawk, but she tells him to come back when he's ready to face the bald man from his past. Later on, Teresa finds a bunch of dead animals in their yard with Kill Yourself painted on the doghouse. She turns around and sees Rosalie staring at her. She calls the police and while talking to them notices Harlan spying on them. Daniel also sees Harlan spying when he gets back. Later, while Daniel's looking up stuff about the dagger in bed, he sees something moving out of the corner of his eye. Suddenly, the devil pounces on him from the ceiling. Daniel fights back. Waking up Teresa, she flips the lights on and the devil vanishes, leaving Daniel with scratches on his legs. The next day, they find out that Harlan died after getting stabbed in the eye with a letter opener. When they ask what happened, a neighbor tells them they're not wanted in town and should leave. Teresa tries to have Rosalie hang out with the neighbor's kid, but the neighbor says they should keep their distance because of all the weird stuff going on. Betty, another neighbor, is watching from her car and laughs in a creepy way. Rosalie says Betty's mean and will get what she deserves, which scares Betty into driving away. Later, Daniel gets a call saying Betty drove her car off of a cliff. Daniel's called to the police station about the string of weird deaths. The detective tells him they found snake relic in Betty's car, and his DNA is on one of the relics, making him a suspect. A bit later, the detective shows up at the Snyder's place. They take Daniel's car and search the house. They find the snake-shaped thing in his suitcase and arrest him for murder. Teresa and Rosalie watch as Daniel's taken away. Once they go back inside, something invisible grabs Teresa by the neck and lifts her up. She hears the devil's voice saying there's only one way to stop all of this. The words kill yourself appear on the wall in blood. Suddenly, she falls to the floor. Daniel makes a phone call to John from the police station. He spills the beans about his past, how he was part of a shady money-making scheme that made him rich but then crashed, leaving him owing people money and almost landing him in jail. He tells John that a bald guy who was actually the devil in disguise offered him a deal to avoid being broke and going to jail by becoming the Harbinger, but he couldn't sign the contract. The devil took his daughter's spirit as collateral until Daniel could collect enough souls for him. He says he came to this town to do the devil's work, but couldn't go through with it. He also tells John there's another harbinger making people end their lives. Daniel begs John to help him find another way, but John doesn't believe him and leaves. Then the detective comes in and says someone paid Daniel's bail. When Daniel walks out, he sees that the mysterious man actually bailed him out. The man gestures for Daniel to go see Floating Hawk the Seer. When Daniel gets to the Seer's place, he tells her he's ready to face the bald man. She tells him a story from way back when the first settlers came to the area. The devil came with them and started killing Native Americans, but when he stepped on their sacred land, he lost his power. So he made a deal with the Native Americans that he wouldn't harm them. However, when the settlers sometimes buried their dead in the sacred lands, the devil couldn't take their souls. The devil then created the first harbingers by telling the settlers that if they gave him enough souls, he would leave them be. But he was lying and no matter how many souls they gave, it was never enough. The seer explains that the dagger was made by God and can break Daniel's deal with the devil. Daniel realizes that part of the church is built on sacred land and that's where he needs to use the dagger on Rosalie. Daniel races back home and tells Teresa to quickly get Rosalie ready as they need to move fast. As they're getting ready, they hear a knock at the door. It's John looking all shaken up and he tells them that the detective has killed himself. John also confesses that he's been a harbinger too like Daniel. But John admits he hasn't been dropping relics around like Daniel, which means there's got to be another harbinger in town. As they're absorbing this information, another knock comes at the door. They're too scared to open it, so they sneak out through the back door. 
As they're hurrying toward the church, Daniel spots the mysterious man from before, standing in the distance, watching them. They decide to ignore him and keep moving, but as they get closer to the church, they see the devil in front of it, blocking their path. Quick thinking, they change plans and enter underground tunnels that lead to the crypt. The tunnels are super creepy and they bump into ghosts, but Daniel uses a special relic the seer gave him, which keeps the ghosts from coming too close. After what feels like forever, they find an opening to the crypt. Daniel desperately searches for a keyhole to use the keys the seer gave him. Just as he finds it, the devil shows up in his full form, looking even more terrifying. Daniel manages to unlock the door and they rush into the crypt just in time. Inside the crypt, Daniel gets Rosalie ready and is about to use the dagger when out of nowhere John reveals a strange globe. This globe has some weird magic and lets the devil come into the crypt. John grabs the dagger from Daniel. They start fighting. John raises a rock to hit Daniel. But suddenly, the mysterious man from before zooms in and tackles John. In the scuffle, John tosses the dagger at Daniel, but the mysterious man jumps in the way and gets stabbed. Daniel wrestles John to the ground, chokes him, and kills him. Looking around for the dagger, he finds it vanished. The mysterious man, now severely wounded, tells Daniel he's actually an angel sent to protect him. But because he's been stabbed with the dagger, he can't help anymore. The angel then fades away, leaving behind another relic. Daniel quickly grabs it, trying to think of what to do next. The devil suddenly shows up in the basement, looking like a regular person. He starts chatting with Daniel, telling him he's actually lived many lives before, all as the devil's helper, a harbinger. He was really good at it at first, but as he kept coming back to life, he became less motivated. This time around, he only manages to lead his friend Jeffrey to his end, the same guy he had a shady money-making plan with. The devil tells Daniel he's no good to him anymore and makes a creepy stairway appear that leads down to hell. The devil spills the beans and tells Daniel that the town is special because it's where harbingers retire. The devil brought Daniel here so he would end up taking his own life, and the devil could get his soul too. As the devil talks, everyone in the town, including John, walks down the spooky stairs into hell, and then the stairs vanish. Now the devil moves toward Daniel to snatch him, but surprise, Daniel shows the special object he found earlier and it makes the devil weak. Daniel fights the devil off and rushes to Rosalie. The special object magically turns into a dagger. But just as Daniel's about to use the dagger, the devil uses some sort of magic to yank it away. The devil is mad as a hornet now and tells Daniel he's going to be his slave forever and that he can't save his daughter's soul. But then, Daniel makes a bold move. He says he'll give up his own soul if the devil lets his daughter's soul go. The devil thinks it's a deal and hands over the dagger. Daniel bravely stabs himself with the dagger and falls down. His soul starts walking towards hell with the devil. But then, Rosalie's soul comes back to her, and she hugs her mom, Teresa. They are both crying and hugging, extremely relieved. Hold on! Plot twist! Daniel suddenly wakes up and still has his soul. The whole family's over the moon. Rosalie pulls out a wooden tablet from Daniel's pocket and says it's a magical soul-saving tablet. She tells them that the angel showed her where it was and also how to find the dagger. With happy hearts, the family leaves town. Daniel feels like a new man, ready to help save other towns from the devil's tricks. In the last scene, the devil pops up from hell and yells that he loves a good challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.